So I, I was on a meeting with someone and and she said, just reach your hand back there and pull back a tape and tell me about it. And some of these tapes are like from the, I don't know, 80s. And I'm not ashamed of who I am, but, I, you know, some of the music back then was kind of <laughs> questionable. So. What did you pull out? It was an LL Cool J way back when he first Ooh, nice. got Yes! Wow. It was okay. Yes! <laughs> yes. We That's are okay. live, everybody. Okay. Live. okay. Mr. Um, so, Mr. Smith, are we ready? Yes, we are. Okay, Ms. Chisholm, I'm going to call the meeting to order, the joint meeting of the um, of the Albemarle and Charlottesville board, boards for the KTEC board meeting, Sorry. October 20th, 2020. Do you want to go ahead and do the roll? Dr. Acuff? Here. Mr. Alcaro? Here. Ms. Carlson? Here. Ms. Lee? Here. Mr. Oberg? Ms. Osborne? Here. Mr. Page? Here. Mr. Bryant? Here. Ms. Bryson Morsberger? Here. Uh, Ms. Kraft? Ms. Larson Torres? Yes, I'm here. Ms. McKeever? Yes. Ms. Perrier? Here. Mr. Wade? Here. Thank you, Ms. Chisholm. Now we're going to go ahead and move to the agenda. Does anybody have any questions on the agenda? I will seek approval then of said agenda via motion. So move one, Wade. Second. Okay, um, hearing no discussion or no com further comments, I'll go ahead and Ask Ms. Chisholm to call a roll again for the vote. Yay or nay is your response to uh, the roll here. Mr. Acuff? Yes. Mr. Alcaro? Yes. Ms. Carlson? Yes. Ms. Lee? Yes. Ms. Osborne? Yes. Mr. Page? Yes. Mr. Bryant? Yes. Ms. Bryson Morsberg? No, sorry. Ms. Bryson Morsberger? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, Ms. Larson Torres? Yes. Ms. McKeever? Yes. Ms. Perrier? Yes. Mr. Wade? Yes. Okay, I understand we have some public comment. Um, we, the KTEC board, of course, welcomes public comment. We ask you to limit your comments to three minutes. And when you come up that you state your name and address for the record. And um, Mr. Smith, I understand we have some some takers. So uh, can I'm gonna go, go ahead and do the timer, but can you introduce our first person? We actually have them for the center board meeting. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. So there's no public comment at this time? That is correct. Great, I will go ahead and close public comment and figure out a better way to say all of that next time. Um, and then we'll go ahead and move to the um, joint, the agenda item 2045, the EMT program presentation. Okay, um, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome, um, to introduce you all to um, Ms. Catherine Gardner Pat or Ms. G, as her students call her, is here tonight to share some insight into her program with you all. Starting her 17th year as a certified EMT and biology instructor, she brings a wealth of experience to her role as the lead for her lead for her PLC, and even more years under her belt as a certified EMT. She is a true expert in her field, and her students benefit deeply from learning side by side with her. As a larger community, we owe Ms. G a great debt for her service as an EMT and a first responder to the Pentagon on 9-11. We are really pleased to have Kat here. She brings so much to our school and I'm excited for her to share some of what she does with you all. So I will turn it over to Kat. Thank you very much, Ms. Carter. Uh, just a quick introduction for myself, um, you know who I am. Um, I'm very pleased to have been able to come back uh, down to the Charlottesville area. As a UVA grad, I've kind of wanted to get back to this area, you know, for many years. And when the opportunity came to take over the program here at KTEC, I jumped on it. 
Um, it has been amazing to see this program go grow from my first year where we only had four students uh, to this year where we have 39 um, in only four years. So it's been quite a lot of growth the last couple of years. It's been really neat to see. Um, just as a, uh, an update from this past year, uh, the students who finished the program at the end of last year, we were able to bring in in small groups in the spring to finish their skills testing. 10 of them qualified for national boards. And as of just a few days ago, all 10 have certified as National Registry EMTs. So we have a 100% pass rate for the students that completed the program. They worked very hard. Um, I have a few things for you tonight. Um, we have one live guest speaker that I'll introduce momentarily. And then I have statements from two other uh, folks who could not be here tonight. So if I could, please let me introduce Ms. Courtney Lambert. She is the Director of Emergency Services and Interim Director of Critical Care in the ICU at Sentara Martha Jefferson. So she sometimes sees people who have EMT training working in the emergency room there at the hospital and has some remarks about the program for you. All right, just make sure, can everybody hear me? Yes. All right, great, thank you. Um, thank you so much for having me today. I'm pleased to be here and um, just very honored to be able to give you a statement on the importance of the EMTB curriculum in our community. Uh, I certainly can speak for myself when I say that I started my nursing career a long, long time ago as an EMT. Um, I ran, I took a class locally, I ran locally and then decided that I wanted to have a career change and go to nursing school. And so I credit a lot of that to my EMTB curriculum. Um, and I, I can't say enough good things about the value of an EMTB curriculum to the community. Um, really, the when you look at a spectrum of emergency services and healthcare in a community, the EMTs that serve the community are the building block, the foundation, the first contact that many people seeking healthcare have with our healthcare continuum. And that goes, you know, the, the, the breadth of, from the very first moment an EMT enters a home or a public space to take care of somebody to the transport, to the hospitalization, and then the subsequent um, discharge and or home health of that patient. And so the EMTs are often the first eyes, ears, and hands that we have in healthcare. And so curriculum such as the one that you have is absolutely uh, a value to the community, certainly a value to us as an employer. Um, I can speak from the Sentara perspective that at Sentara Martha Jefferson in the emergency department where I've been for the last 15 years. Um, one of the prerequisites for working as an uh, emergency department technician is to, that you either hold an EMTB certification or that you're actively enrolled in nursing school. Uh, and that's because we need those, e those uh, emergency department technicians to come in with some clinical knowledge uh, as a foundation to then continue to grow their skills in the hospital setting. Um, so everyone that we interview has to either have an EMTB or be enrolled in nursing school. Um, and then oftentimes we support them through uh, the progression of their healthcare career. Uh, many times EMTB sparks an interest in people. It did for me. Uh, it's what prompted me to go to nursing school and to continue to serve the community in a different way. Um, but I, I always say that the heart of, um, of my health care came from being an EMT in the time that I spent in the field. Uh, I just, you know, can't speak highly enough of a program that feeds this community uh, and feeds the youth of our community to really become a vested member. Uh, there is something very powerful about being able to have the wherewithal to go into a home and provide emergency care to somebody who needs it in the very worst of their moments. And so having someone um, like Ms. Gardner lead the program who can uh, build the confidence and skill set of these students is is unlike any other. So um, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions, but I, I'm, I thank you for your time and I thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank you. It was really great to hear from you, Ms. Lambert. Go ahead, Ms. Gardner. Okay. Um, I have statements from two folks who were not able to be here tonight. They have other meetings going on. Uh, the first is from Chief John Apperson, um, Division Chief for the Louisa County Fire Department. He says that for most departments our size, and Louisa County is a very small fire department, we normally hire around two to four folks at a time. So running a full academy for that small number is not cost effective. It also takes three to four months of training 
and that is time lost on the street, not answering calls for service. Uh, Alex Tarapa, a student who completed both the KTEC Fire Science and EMT programs, is currently working for Louisa County Fire and Rescue, and the chief says he is an excellent provider. It has been a huge time saver for them that he could they could hire someone who is already trained and ready to go to work, and the department did not have to spend months and, of training and dollars to get him trained. He is ready to go day one. Um, the chief says that KTEC has an excellent program for both EMT and firefighting, as most counties move towards career staff systems, that is, it is paramount that we have a vocational institution that provides highly qualified candidates who are ready to enter their workforce upon graduation. This is one of the problems, that's the end of his statement. Uh, one of the problems with uh, smaller departments that we have around here, some of the more rural departments is the training aspect. Um, it takes a lot of people coming in to have a, a recruit academy and many of these departments just don't have that many people on staff. They don't hire that many at the same time. So we really um, give them a boost uh, in getting people onto the street right away. The second statement is from Dr. William Brady. He is the operational medical director for the KTEC EMT program. He's an emergency physician at UVA hospital, professor of emergency medicine, and is recognized as a David A. Harrison distinguished educator at the University of Virginia School of Medicine. Dr. Brady is unable to be here tonight as he is vice chair for the uh, School of Medicine Promotion and Tenure Committee, which is currently meeting right now. Um, his statement is as follows. I want to share a couple of thoughts with you regarding the importance of the KTEC EMT course for our students. First of all, EMT training is excellent preparation for anyone, whether they are considering a medically oriented career or not. It is just simply good preparation that will enable the student later in life to care for anyone with illness or injury until more definitive care can be applied. Furthermore, EMT training is a great preparation for anyone interested in career fire rescue work, certain hospital-based jobs, for example, ER technician, public safety officer, as well as industrial health. In fact, several of these areas, it is a prerequisite for many medically related jobs, both in and out of the hospital. As a medical director for local fire and rescue, as well as for hospital-based medical teams, I know that training and certification as an EMT most definitely provides the KTEC student with an important life skill and training asset and allows them to be competitive candidates in today's job market. As the KTEC program medical director, I have a personal interest not only in the success of the program, but the quality of education that the program provides to the students. Please let me know if I can address any questions, comments, et cetera, from the board. If you have any, I will certainly let him know. Thank Those you, were the, uh, the statements I have from community, me community members regarding the EMT program. How is Do you it going have any questions semester? for me? How's it going this semester? We're having a tough time. Um, we're doing the best we can. We're getting a lot of the uh, preliminary uh, knowledge in the book work, but we really need to get some skills going. These kids really start to engage more when we do physical and we do hands-on. We were able to send some toolkits home so we can do some simple ta tasks like blood pressure, some splinting and bleeding control, but some of the equipment is just too large and too expensive and we only have a few of them, so we can't send them home with everybody. Uh, we're, we're hoping to be able to come back at some point so that we can get those skills in and allow the students to um, attend certification testing. Um, in addition, I wanted to mention that this spring, we this coming spring, we are actually uh, starting to advertise for an adult ed EMT program that will be done in the hybrid uh, fashion. We'll be having a, an online component for the book work and meet about every other week, um, about, about twice a month or so for skills. And we'll be offering that for community members or adults who may, because we've had some, uh, some interest, some uh, people have been asking about it. So we're gonna actually pilot that in the spring. Um, Madam Chair, I have a, a couple of quick questions and comments. Um, first, um, can you comment on what you contribute your success in raising the number from four or five to 39? And how, I mean, how unusual is it to get all 10 of your um, 10 for 10? Because I understand that the test is pretty difficult and it's not a given that you know you pass it on the first time, but um, you know, could could you speak on on those, please? Certainly. 
Uh, the growth of the program, I believe, is coming from word of mouth from the students. Um, I am very passionate about what I do. I was a career paramedic for a number of years. I was a volunteer for 14 years and career paramedic for seven. So I've got real background knowledge. I, I didn't just learn about what I'm teaching. I actually lived it. When we go through BLS uh, resuscitation, I can talk to my students about actually doing CPR and what the difference is between the mannequins and a real patient. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited when the students get that aha moment, when, especially when we're doing something really tough and you see them go, I get it now. That's like one of the most exciting things. <clears throat> and being able to really kind of develop a team within the class, because it does meet more often than most of the other classes, the class, the group really kind of becomes a team and they seem to get invested in each other. They're not just interested in my own success. They really want to help each other and let everybody get there. At the beginning of the year, I put up a cork board in the classroom. It's empty at first, and then one day I have it covered. And at some, towards the end of class that day, I said, guys, I have something to show you. And I pull the cover off, and it's covered in EMT patches, and each one has their name under a patch. And I said, all right, guys, here's your patch. At the end of the year, when you earn your certification, I will open this case, and you will come get that patch. And they all just go. They look at it every day in the classroom. It's motivation for them, and it has been very successful. Um, having a 100% pass rate is not very common. Usually there are a few uh, that don't pass. In my experience, I have been very careful when I am taking uh, educator training classes. I actually have taken several seminars from people at the National Registry on how they write their tests, on the item writing techniques that they use, so I can take that information back to my students. I've taken the time to become a state skills evaluator, so I know exactly what they are looking for when they go for their skills testing. I have to train myself in how they're going to be evaluated at testing so I can get them ready for that. It's not quite the same as teaching to the test. Doing a skills test <laughs> takes a little bit more than just memorizing the questions. Um, but I've gotten, I think I've gotten better. I shouldn't say I'm the best yet, but I'm, I've got definitely gotten better in training them to be ready for the type of test they're gonna be taking because National Registry is a lot more um, critical thinking. It's not just rote memorization on those questions. They're scenario questions. Here's a patient situation, here are the signs and symptoms, what's wrong with them? Or what would you do to treat this patient? And they have to think through what do those signs and symptoms mean? Therefore, what's wrong? What is the treatment for it? It's multi-step thinking that takes a while. They get excited when they start learning and figuring out, hey, wait a minute, I can do this. And it builds. We're working on that now. It's definitely a little more challenging um, virtually, but we're making progress. The students are starting to get excited. We've gotten through some of the, the basics at the beginning and we're starting to really get into the, the medicine. Um, of the EMT program, and I can see that they're starting to, it's starting to pique their interest a little bit more, and they're getting more curious, which means they're starting to get more engaged. Miss Gardner? Um, yes. I'm always interested in how our students do once they get their certifications or graduate from high school or whatever. Uh, all 10 pass, but do, do we, how careful tracking, do we track the students getting jobs or going on for further education? Um, from, from this program and any other programs at KTEC? We get some, uh, Ms. Carter, do you know if we have any, if it's the um, the surveys, right? Yeah. The following year? Yeah. We do, we do. We track our students for one year, we're required to, uh, for state reporting for one year post high school. Um, I don't know the answer for EMT specifically right off. I could certainly look at that data, but, um, we do, we do track them for, we do track it for all of our students. And, and I think we've found too, sometimes students may not go into what they learned at K-Tech right out of high school and then they circle back or, um, or, they, or they go off into uh, to another field and maybe they, maybe they come back in some way. 
So the one year tracking isn't, I think, always the whole story. Um, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. And a lot of them will go on and start college and then move into a nursing program um, along the way. And they haven't gone into that maybe right away. They're just getting some of their undergrad uh, classes out of the way. Thank you. Ms. Gardner, how many uh, locations do you have? Uh, I know now it's, it's, it's different than what it was a year. But right now, how many locations is the program set up for? EMT is currently set up for two pro, for two locations, and so I think I think that the increase in enrollment and, and you all know and are well aware this is only the end of my first year, so um, I, I wasn't here when that was put in place. But I, having observed Kat, I think there are multiple things that have attributed to her success. Her success one is that she is a, she's a seasoned uh, paramedic and she knows what she's talking about. She makes it engaging. Uh, we, if I come out here, kids are um, being wheeled around on stretchers and we have accident scenes and all kinds of stuff going on in the K-Tech hall. Um, but I do you think also one of the things that's contributed was the addition of the satellite program at Western has allowed students where transportation is so challenging from so far out to, um, access the program and that's been really successful and uh, certainly I think the students there have appreciated it and embraced it and um, that's got a couple of year three students this year that are coming back they don't want to leave for so much that they're coming back to help assist in the class. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions for Ms. Gardner? Yeah, Ms. Gardner, how many of the students, or are you able to track this, are able to do some type of EMT work within Charlottesville out mile within the city and county? Um, the, ones, the ones that keep in touch with me, I'm more aware of. I know I have about eight or nine currently that are volunteering with local fire and rescue. Um, some one or two are career and most of the others are off at school somewhere. One actually went to the Merchant Marines a couple of years ago um, and is using that training uh, there as well. I'm not sure exactly, but I, I, I can count about eight or nine off the top of my head that are actively volunteering with local squads. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Hi, this is Courtney. Can I say one more thing? Um, just to piggyback off of Ms. Gardner's comment, I think that it's important also to recognize that this, the EMT certification certainly can open additional doors for furthering the education. Um, I know it's in Tara Martha Jefferson. We have um, a, a community foundation that's very supportive of advancing education. And so our ER techs that are working with us um, after a period of tenure are eligible for nursing scholarships to advance their education. And so they can uh, certainly come in, work, gain experience. Many of them will work with us while they're furthering their education in school. Um, some of those have chosen to go the nursing route, some have chosen to go PA, medical school. We see a little bit of everything, but it is important to note that this, the, the starting of the EMT, the foundation opens additional doors um, by way of scholarship opportunities. Uh, there are there are many uh, opportunities as well for scholarships that are available for volunteers. And so if they're volunteering in their own community, that may open the door for additional scholarships for other educational pursuits. So uh, I think that, that it certainly opens a lot of doors. Thank you for that, Ms. Lambert. I think we did we lose our our board chair. Looks like it. Let me text her. Okay. Oh no, I'm gonna have to take over. 
You've got Ooh, it. Katrina. Coo, coo, coo. <laughs> good, Katrina. We have we have confidence in you. Yeah. <laughs> If anyone would like to ever come into the K-Tech building at some point when the students can come in and get your blood pressure checked, it's great practice for them. Okay. Here she is, she's back. She's back. I think we wrap up, I think we're, I think EMT presentation, thank you, Ms. Gardner, um, for your time and certainly Ms. Lambert for your time. We really appreciate you um, coming out and, and speaking so eloquently about, about a wonderful program at K-Tech, so thank you. Hey, I'm sorry thank about you. that. My son just called that and he was, he's like on his 14th time driving and uh, so somebody hit him. So that's, <laughs> that's what happens. So thankfully uh, there's a lot of EMTs, but he's fine, thankfully. And, um, but anyway, I apologize for that little disruption. Um, and so, yeah, next thing is the um, student enrollment. You're muted. Yeah. Um. So Mr. Smith will take his maiden voyage on presenting at a center board meeting and um, share student enrollment information with you all. Thank you, Ms. Carter. So our enrollment for this school year is 290. Uh, while this number is up from last year, we had antici anticipated it to be even higher. Our enrollment at the end of the summer was 320. Um, we feel like we lost some to early graduation and that we, um, some of them, when they learned that we were gonna be entirely online, they opted to enroll in classes at their base school because um, they felt like the K-Tech experience really needed to be live and in person. Uh, that said, eight of our 10 courses are fully enrolled at this point. Okay, what questions do we have for, oh, you can keep going, okay. Uh, as you can see, our largest enrollment is uh, Albemarle High School, followed by Monticello, and Charlottesville High School, and then Western Albemarle. This is a trend that is very similar to previous years. There's nothing uh, terribly different about uh, this particular data. Are there any questions? I just wanna add um, just, a, just a data point is that because we are four by four this year, Albemarle County is a four by four, we did lose a number of students that were uh, that opted for early graduation because our programs do run year long. Um, so that also impacted our enrollment for this year. What other questions do we have for Ms. Carter or Mr. Smith? I guess just a question about um, <clears throat> Monticello's numbers are almost as high as Elmore High School. Is, is that usually the case? I mean, I, I should know this. I've been on the board for a while, but. <laughs> it is usually the case. K-Tech, um, our, our Monticello High School students really embrace K-Tech and um, as do, as do um, Elmore High School um, and, and CHS, but uh, yeah, usually Monticello has a really strong enrollment. I have a question about the other, the five other, where, um, who, who exactly are they? We have a couple of students that are out of district. So if, at the end of enrollment, if we have seats open, um, we have we have a student from Fluvanna and a student from Green that are currently attending K-Tech. And then we have three other students that are um, homeschool, that are homeschool students. Okay. They pay tuition. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I could look this up, but maybe someone just knows. What's the size of Charlottesville High School? Charlottesville? It's about 1,200 students. Okay. So like Western, the equivalent of Western. I'm sorry, Katrina, I couldn't hear you. What did you I was say? just saying like the equivalent of Western. I was just trying to get a better sense of this, if it's all proportional between student population and about how many of the student population is attending um, K-Tech. It is, and it's interesting really, um, really to step back and look at which base schools feed into which programs. So uh, we certainly, we have very strong enrollment. We have an, an entire section of our nursing assistant program from 
Brownsville High School, we have an entire section of culinary art from CHS. Um, so some of our, and obviously Western, those numbers, CATS EMT class feeds into those numbers as well. Um, and they're, they're all Western students. Okay, um, thank you for this information. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Thank you, Anthony. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so we have the next item, which is um, comments from the director. Um, so I, I first want to thank all every school board member for coming on to our joint uh, our joint meeting. I know that you all have had a million meetings, and another meeting um, is always something to tackle. So thank you for taking time out of your evening to come and hear about K Tech. Your support is really important, and we hope that we are doing you all um, proud with strong programming for our students. Um, thank you for coming to hear about us. I'd also like to take this opportunity to share an experience that I had today. Um, most mornings I walk around the school and I say good morning to, my, to our teachers or uh, whoever's in the building, our custodians and our main supervisor and just check on folks in the building. Um, today, um, today, Mr. Tremor's always my last stop. He's in the building in the building trades lab all the way at the end. And I was a little later than usual this morning and as I walked into his space, I heard him talking and I peeked in the window to see if he was Zooming. Uh, Mr. Trimmer wasn't Zooming. He had his GoPro set up on a tripod and was recording himself teaching students how to assemble an electrical, um, an electrical board, electrical circuit board. So those of you that don't know Mr. Trimmer, he has been teaching for a long time. Mr. Trimmer is our um, building trades and electrical instructor. And while he is always magic in the classroom, by, by far, he had the least experience of anyone at K-Tech with, with using technology. So seeing him today really inspired me. Um, and I have to take this opportunity to thank, to thank our instructors for all they've done and all they've given. They've really gone above and beyond. And online learning is a heavy lift for all of our teachers, but especially for teachers that have never used an LMS or a webcam or Zoom or GoPro or a tripod. And the list of the newly introduced items just seems to go on and on. We stepped up at every opportunity and I just cannot pay, I just can't say enough um, that anything that KTech does to shine is because of our unbelievable instruct instructional staff that has pushed themselves beyond anything that I ever expected or imagined. Um, so I just wanted to take my time to say that I'm inspired by them and I'm humbled by them every single day and they deserve all the recognitions and all the recognition and I just wanted to express my most sincere gratitude to them. That's all. That's what I wanted to say in my comments. Thank you, Ms. Carter. That's really, really beautiful. Well stated. Thank you. Um, adult Education Program Manager. Hello, everyone. Hi. So at the last meeting, I know I reported that we were having some difficulty finding clinical rotations for our adult CNA programs. Um, I'm happy to report that we have secured a location uh, thanks to a foundation board member to really help facilitate that. Um, our students, we have two classes uh, that started clinicals this past weekend at Commonwealth Senior Living on Pantops. Um, so we are really happy that they are able to start their clinical experiences and be able to complete the program uh, by mid-December. Um, we are also excited, as Ms. Gardner reported, uh, to be working with her to start an adult EMT program that we plan on starting in the spring. We are really excited. Um, we have had several um, outside parties interested in that. Um, so we're grateful that she's willing to take that on for us. Um, and also the, the key to the adult programming and the apprenticeship program is marketing. Um, and we are currently in the process of developing a uh, nice fully in color course catalog um, that we hope to mass distribute um, to the local community to be able to really get the word out about our programs, what KTEC is, um, and what we offer so the community really understands and, and knows that we're here. And that's it. 
Any questions for Ms. Tomlin? Just one. Um, with the EMT, with the, some of the adult programs, it seems to me might um, benefit from the hybrid programming even after we're beyond COVID. I mean, and we do have um, a lot of our apprenticeship programs. Uh, we offered, this is the first time that we have offered online, fully online apprenticeship programming. Uh, we do have a little over 100 students enrolled in that option for the, the online um, apprenticeship program. One of our CNA classes that we started in July, which was pretty early, that was a hybrid model. Um, so a lot of the instruction was online and then the students came in uh, one night a week then to be able to practice their skills. So I, I do think we are moving in that um, moving in that direction. We do plan on offering some more classes in the spring uh, that are fully, fully virtual and are different than what we have offered in the past. Thank Something you. else that Ms. Tomlin's been really open to that's been really helpful is we've had a few students just with the wonkiness of scheduling this year that could not get um, nursing into their schedule or um, EMT into their schedule. And she's very graciously opened up her programs to those students in the evening. So we have, we have three high school students that are going to be, right now we think, taking, um, taking advantage of, of her programming so that they can, they can, they can, um, they can Look for, the, look for the career path that they want to pursue. I had one question. Uh, Ms. Tomlin, how many of our CNA students are at Commonwealth? Um, our two classes that we have is 19. We have, so 19 adult students. So one group goes on Saturdays and then the second group goes on Sundays. And they're there from seven to 3.30 PM. Thank you. Uh -huh. I really like the idea of this um, high school students and the adult, I mean, in some way, because I just feel like so many high schoolers would benefit from KTEC's um, community, but um, can't fit it into their schedule during the day. Um, and so I just really appreciate that flexibility and hope that we can continue to um, provide programming that meets the needs of all of the students who would possibly come to our come to KTEC. I just think it's critical. So I'm really, really um, glad and grateful to, to, you know, three is a great start. And I'm looking and I, I hope that we can continue to build that out a little bit. Any other questions? Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Tomlin. Thank you. Okay, and the assistant principal. Thank you so much. Uh, first off, I just wanted to uh, reintroduce myself to whomever doesn't know me. I'm Anthony Smith. I have um, worked in all of our local high schools in one capacity or another. Um, I'm very excited. I used to work at KTEC years ago and I'm very, very excited to be back here. Uh, one thing I did wanna inform you about is that we have partnered with UVA's um, America Reads Tutors. And so this is a new program for us this year. We have about a dozen America Reads Tutors who are Zooming with our students. Um, and we feel as if they're already making a huge difference. Um, for those of you not familiar, this is um, a financial aid program um, at UVA. And so they, um, they're typically graduate students uh, and they come and spend an hour and a half one-on-one uh, -on -one with our students in a breakout room in Zoom. And it's been very positive. Great, thank you. Um, so that, um, is that all the comments from, uh, your staff, Ms. Carter? Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, are there any comments from the board, the boards? I have a question, Madam Chair. Yes, um, and it goes back to the, um, student enrollment. Is there any way you could provide us, um, after the meeting with a breakdown of like uh, the student enrollment um, along like demographic lines, um, race and gender, just to get an idea of what the student population looks like. 
Of course, I'll be most happy to do that. Do you want this year? Or would you like? Would you like to see? I probably can pull data for the last five years. This year? Oh, okay. If you have it for the last five years, that'd be great. Thank you. To piggyback uh, off of that, just because it might be useful, I'm not sure what you're looking for exactly, but it also by program, I think varies quite a bit. Um, so some programs are very homogeneous in their population and it's something like, it's worth, I don't know if you can break it down by program, Stephanie. I can, I can see, I'm sure that I, I'm sure we can. Like I know there's a gender disparity for sure in um, the cosmetology versus. Yeah, and we definitely have those struggles with non uh, recruiting non-traditional students into, obviously, auto mechanics is very heavily male, cosmetology is very heavily female. Um, we have lots of different, lots of different areas where, where we struggle to recruit uh, non-traditional, non-traditional, they're called non-traditional students. So I'd be curious if racial or, or economic disparities were also specific to programming. I will, we will, I will pull that for you. It might be next week. Um, um, our database administrator is out of the next couple of days. So maybe next week, but we will get it to you. And have y'all provided that before? I feel like you'll have provided it. Yeah, they provide it to us as a board, as a center board pretty regularly. That's why I've seen it before. There you yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other um, joint board items? Okay, so our um, center board meeting starts at 630. Is that right, Ms. Carter? Or because like that is correct. So we should definitely hop off and then come back again. Yes, we're going to stop the live stream and we will restart it at 630. Okay. Thank you all Great. for coming. Thank you all for um, coming. And um, I'm sorry that you didn't get to have the delicious meal that our K Tech students typically provide. Um, and um, it's good that to see. That is you. a loss. It, it is. A loss. Loss. It is. So definitely try to make it one of these times when we um, when things are different. Um, and <laughs> any other comments? Okay. And the so I'm going to needs to make deliveries to us. If we... Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not unreasonable at all, right? <laughs> that's good. Ms. McKeever, can I just say that the folks that are on for the next meeting, if they will hang on here, um, we're not ending this meeting. We're just going to stop the live feed. All okay. right, Mr. Page. So everybody who's coming for the next meeting, um, you can just like mute and stop video for 15 minutes and then come back at 630. So all of those, uh, we're going to adjourn, hearing no objection, adjourn the um, joint board meeting. It was great to see everybody. Take yeah, care. Good to see you, John.